We have another and very big headline about health this morning. And you may have seen this, this story this week that there are people who flush red in the face after drinking alcohol. And in Asian populations, they've discovered they may have an increased risk for esophageal cancer. Doctors say that the study should go on, particularly in, in non-Asian populations. But in the meantime, esophageal cancer, and this is not in dispute, remains one of the fastest growing cancers in the country. The rate of new cases increasing 400 to 500 percent a year. And more than 70 percent of them are among men. It's twice as deadly as melanoma. So what is causing this? What are the symptoms? We're going to tell you all of that. But it does catch most of its victims by surprise. It's, I mean, it's, it's surreal, right? Because uh, we, we, you never think it's going to happen to you. Jeff Carpenter got the shock of his life last spring, just 41 years old, father of two. He was diagnosed with esophageal cancer after experiencing trouble swallowing. The cancer never crossed my mind. My dad uh, has had acid reflux and Barrett's esophagus for years, uh, so I figured that I was starting to develop some of those symptoms. The thought that I might have cancer never even crossed my mind. Another patient in that surge of esophageal cancer, fully half of the cases may be related to the nation's growing problem with acid reflux. Here's what can happen. The stomach acid backs up in the lower esophagus, in some cases damaging cells which then change. Some of the changed cells called Barrett esophagus. It ran in Jeff's family. Sometimes Barrett becomes cancer. Unfortunately, esophageal cancer is a highly lethal disease there are approximately 16,000 cases diagnosed in the United States yearly, and approximately 14,000 patients die of the disease. In addition to reflux, there are other risk factors, smoking, drinking, obesity. The doctors say that the symptoms can be tricky. Sometimes it can manifest such as having a cough that doesn't go away. Sometimes it can manifest as a sore throat. Sometimes it can manifest just as as indigestion, and then a more ominous sign is difficulty swallowing. Like Jeff, who was lucky, caught his cancer at stage one. After chemo and surgery, he's now back at work, hopeful for the future. But what if thousands of us could avoid cancer? What if the big surge in esophageal cancers could be stopped with a test? We hope you'll gather everyone you know and join around this morning and listen to this because there is a test. And we are joined now by Dr. Jonathan Aviv, Dr. Thomas Murray of New York Presbyterian Hospital, Columbia University Medical Center, and their patient, who is Nick Chaklis, and he's with us. He's going to undergo a test right here this morning before your eyes. It's very short, and our own ABC News medical editor, Dr. Tim Johnson, here as well. Let me just start with you, Tim, and Dr. Aviv, I want you to weigh on this too. Symptoms, symptoms, symptoms. I think people always think I must have to have extreme radical heartburn to have any symptoms that could cause Barrett, but not, not so. Not at all, not at all. That certainly can be a symptom, but what we're seeing more and more are people who don't have any heartburn, any real chest pain of any kind. Their symptoms are focused in the upper part of the throat area. They may have a chronic cough. They may have hoarseness. They may have just a little irritation in the throat. May feel a little lump in the throat. These can all be symptoms of reflux that has reached the throat. So Dr. Viva, you're saying if somebody has a chronic cough for what length of time or hoarseness when should they come in to you we define chronic cough as more than six weeks uh, you should see your doctor uh, the doctor will do an exam starting with the chest to make sure the cough isn't coming from the chest uh, but once that's not the issue we have to look at other areas so you're not going to do it on everybody who walks in the door absolutely not but you do have a procedure and again this can detect Barrett very early so you can be watching it make changes that could eventually uh, maybe even prevent half of these cancers? Our hope is that as Dr. Johnson said what we hope to do is the heartburn may be throat burn. Mm -hmm. uh, I think of the stomach as connected to the throat so we could hopefully detect these lesions very very early and prevent disease. Now we should say Tim right there is a regular endoscope that you can have with anesthesia which With can conscious look at sedation, this. yes, the oral procedure that gastroenterologists do. But this procedure, I'm going to say it badly, transnasal nasal esophagoscopy? Precisely. Oh, great. It's called TNE. It takes about one minute. You can do it, go right to work. And Nick, you're going to undergo it for I us. Am. 
here. Now, we should say there's an irony because Nick actually works with the company that makes this, but he has Barrett. Mm -hmm. And he's learned that he has Barrett. And you're going to show us how this works. So tell us how, how you proceed. Okay, so this very tiny scope is going to go into Nick's nose. We're going to start on the right side. Mm -hmm. We're going along the bottom of the nose. Does it hurt, Nick? Not at all. Really? And you have a little bit of antiseptic, a little, and spray. A little spray in the nose. And is, is this a risky procedure in any way, Dr. Rivera? No. The, all the risks of upper endoscopy are because of sedation. Uh, over sedation or under sedation can lead to heart problems, uh, stroke, other problems, stopping breathing. Uh -huh. So uh, we avoid that completely with this technique. So what are we seeing okay, here? Okay, what you're seeing now are the vocal cords open. Nick, say mm -hmm. E, and then sniff. So give me three E and then a sniff. E, E, E. Okay, so at the bottom of the screen, that's mm -hmm. where the tongue is. At mm -hmm. the top of the screen, at 12 o'clock, is where the esophagus opens. So I'm going to have Nick try to swallow. And, and he's swallowing right now. That opens the esophagus, and I'm in the esophagus. It's hard to believe Nick isn't gagging or anything. When you swallow, you abolish the gag reflex. So we're taking advantage of normal physiology. Nick, can I trouble you to drink some water? And Tim, let me ask you, you don't have a sore throat after this? No, not much of a one. Uh, you may have a little irritation afterward. Uh, but it does avoid right. the conscious sedation, water, which please. is... Dr. Aviv says is the major issue Perfect. for the other procedure. Okay, so the water's coming down. I'm going to follow the water mm -hmm. down into the esophagus mm -hmm. here. And what you're going to see in a second at about 7 o'clock on the screen is this precancerous lesion, which is called Barrett esophagus. So, Nick, again, uh, actually just swallow your saliva. Good. Okay, here it comes. There it is, that little pink island. Where is it? Where, uh, You're going to see it again. Okay. Here it is, right there, opening up right there. Oh, right there, that's that small thing on the side. Yeah, the like salmon-colored island, if you will. Now, right. we're going to go into the stomach now. Uh, can you swallow a little more water? <laughs> okay, while you're doing this, Dr. V, because I want to point out again, that little we're island in the stomach red right and you can see changes you can see the barrett uh no uh, now we're in the, in the yeah, we're, we're in the stomach now uh-huh and everything looks good we've just retroflexed so the scope is bent back on itself so right. we could see where the scope enters the stomach okay i want everybody at home to know this is it now really and you can come right back out it's going to come out pain-free and tim if you found Barrett, and this is so key, please tell everybody mm. about this. If you have found it, what do you do? You are then going to have follow-up basically for the rest of your life, uh, usually with a gastroenterologist. They will keep an eye on it. They will biopsy it. Okay, if it starts to change into early cancer, they will uh, leap into action either with uh, maybe a surgical procedure. Today they also use radiofrequency, but the point is this is a precursor of cancer, so you have to follow it with yearly exams the rest of your life. And diet, very important. Alcohol, watch the alcohol, watch your weight. Yep. Anything uh, else? Well, smoking, excessive alcohol, and obesity, which increases the reflux. All of those are lifestyle issues that lead to an increased risk for this cancer. Okay. We're, we're about to do our biopsy. Oh, you really are? <laughs> well, again, it's not painful. You can do it fast, and it can save your life. We're going to be doing more on this because of the fast rise in esophageal cancer. Find out more at abcnews.com.